listen, Skahan, you're a young dude, and your Twitter account kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm listen, not good on social media. Yeah, you're not good. You're not good at all. So, Jack Skahan with the San Jose Quakes. First of all, can you see the jersey behind me? I can. Yeah, that's pretty cool. A badass. There's an autograph on there too, Broham. All right, so settle. Really, uh, Skahan, a guy like yourself, uh, a young guy like you, who were your Pele's of the world as a as a kid? I mean, Messi and Ronaldo. I think anyone in my generation would have to say that. It's just it wasn't really close when it comes to those two. Was it the style of play for you? Because soccer players talk about the style. Fans talk about the style of players. Was it that or just the fact that the, the, their numbers were just astronomical? Both. And for me with Ronaldo, it started when he was at United, when he was playing in England, because his style then was just, I mean, it shot off the screen at you. It was just so impressive. And, um, and then, of course, Messi is just on another planet. So it's both. Did you understand the style of play early on? I, I didn't, again, I'm, I'm, too old to even comment on that style in soccer was never a thing back in the early early 70s it was just I mean technique I think was finally making its way into the vernacular did you understand it at you know, four five six years old no no chance I can't sit here and say I did to be honest a lot of that didn't come to me until really college where I was starting to understand what I was watching in terms of not just, you know, these guys are so good at what they do, the technique, but the style, the tactics, and the different playing styles for club really fell in college. And a lot of that had to do with just being around people who were smarter than me in terms of soccer, <laughs> in terms of my teammates. But it didn't really matter, though, right? When you were playing in high school or playing with clubs, it didn't matter that style was a part of the game yet or that there were certain nuances per team. It didn't matter until college, right? No, it didn't. When you're growing up and playing, it's, <laughs> you know, it's who's, who's a good athlete does well, who's technical does well, because not everyone is. Who were you on, let's say, some of your younger teams? Who were you in some of your young school teams? Were you the guy that was always running after the ball? Were you the guy with the skill? Or were you just the guy that was like, hey, I'm learning as I go? I was just fast. <laughs> I was always just fast. And it wasn't until high school when I started really working on it. And I would go to um, my high school, had a really good lacrosse team. And I'd go to the, the big concrete wall the lacrosse wall and kick the ball against the wall and dribble through cones and kick it against the wall like every single day. And that's when I started to develop any sort of technique and skill. Before then, I was just fast and like no joke. I was terrible. So wait a minute. You were self-taught then. Your skill, for the most part, at least the basis of it, was self-taught. Well, yeah. I mean, I grew up playing at clubs and we did mm -hmm. things, but in Memphis, especially in my age group there just weren't many players and so no i can't say i was self-taught because i had good coaches and grew up in clubs but a lot of it was uh just putting in time but that being said jack skahan here in the freak nation that being said yeah when you think of big boy soccer you don't think memphis you don't <laughs> no but you still had to separate yourself to get a call from north carolina can you walk us through that process were there other teams out there, other schools that said, we want Skahan on this bench or on this field versus North Carolina? There were other schools, but I wasn't crazily highly recruited like some of these guys. Um, I had the benefit of having a coach who knew Carlos, the head coach of UNC, and he recommended me. And then so because of that, Carlos came and watched me. And I think that what he saw was, okay, he's a good athlete. I can figure it out. You know, we can work together and create a good soccer player. Um, and so Carlos gave me the option at the end of my sophomore year, and I committed immediately because I was a UNC fan growing up. My grandfather played <laughs> basketball and baseball at UNC. Um, my whole family was UNC. So when I got that option, I was, I was going. So Memphis, North Carolina, now California. You've lived in some pretty vastly different areas. 
Do you have a food favorite in all three and something that you might miss now that you're in California and not over in the south or southeast? The food, yeah, it's crazy. I, <laughs> I've learned to eat healthy being here, and it's a process. Because in Memphis, you don't eat healthy. You eat barbecue and <laughs> fried food, and um, and I miss it, yeah, all the time. You, you can't find it out here. That's just the – you just can't. You can't find anything like it. But if you have a good game, if you, I mean, you got to treat yourself. If you're working your ass off and you finally crush it in a game, you need to treat yourself with some barbecue, good or bad. Just find some and For treat sure. yourself. For sure. I haven't found one yet. Oh, well, no. Crasher, listen, you're, you're throwing softballs at this guy. He's born and raised in Memphis. He goes to North Carolina. Uh, sorry, bro. I'm, I'm from Texas. There's no barbecue better than Texas barbecue. Oh, here specific. we go. What? Come on, man. Kansas City can suck it. Uh, Kansas Texas City's is not the, close. I agree. Right? <laughs> right? Okay, you guys agree on that. Yeah, I'll give you that. Have you found anything that's comparable to your homeboys in, in Memphis as far as no. barbecue goes? No, nothing. And maybe I'm not looking enough. And maybe it's just my instinct telling me that I'm just not going to find it. <laughs> maybe I've just accepted the fact coming here that it's just not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a road trip up to San Fran. There's got to be yeah. something in that city. Barbecue yeah. in San Francisco, Crash? There's got to be. A, what the hell is that? Seafood and wine and all that stuff. But come on, there's got to be one good corner barbecue bar of some sort. If, if you know of one, I'd love to hear it because okay. I'll go. I'll people go right on, now. People on social, shout out to Jack. He, or, yeah, he needs it. <laughs> Jack Skahan, what's your favorite barbecued meat or poultry and why? A pulled pork sandwich. Ooh. Um, there are a few spots in Memphis that are just incredible. Or ribs, and I like wet ribs. Hold on a second. It also has a little bit to do with the Q sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is there is is that the key for you? The sauce has to be. Has to be. Normally, and in North Carolina, the sauce is vinegar based, and in Memphis, yeah. it's not. And I I hate the vinegar based. So Ooh. I didn't like the North Carolina barbecue either. So I think I'm just picky. So what did wow. you do there? Come on, that's a long time, though. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time. But in college, we were broke, so <laughs> we, we ate what we could. Pizza, ramen noodles. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's swap stories. And Crash, you know I'm going there. Uh, I played ball in college, scholarship ball, and you're, you're, it's so true. We were so freaking broke. We would go through the chow line probably two or three times <laughs> Uh, in the afternoon, we, we, we were able to work it. Again, this is back in the early 80s, so we were able to score the system then. Could you go through the chow line and grab all kinds of uh, lunch two or three times a day? So we, we did have those passes yeah. where you could eat as much as you want, and that was nice. And you took advantage of it how many, how many hundreds yeah. of times? Yeah, a lot. And also confirm, every player that we've had here in the Freak Nation, you confirm, they confirm with me, that soccer players are just a different breed, whether we're walking through campus with our shirts on backwards and our Adidas flip-flops. We just did things different uh, on campus. Were you and your boys at UNC just a little backwards and just I didn't give a shit? Maybe a little bit, yeah. But UNC is great because, um, honestly, like every team is good. And whether it's men or women, every team is good. And so, I don't know, I think a lot of the times with – high-level athletes, they're a little bit different. So I think the athletes kind of stuck out. You know, you bring me to another point that I hadn't really thought of before because we are very interested in the MLS growing and getting a better American fan base. And it's, it's baby steps, but it's getting there eventually. It seems like every time the World Cup comes around, you get more people on the periphery becoming soccer fans. But what about the college level? Because you kind of need to get a fan base for the sport at that point as well, because that's eventually what the MLS stars are. I mean, that's where they come from, or some of them at least. So what do you think? What are your thoughts of how the NCAA is doing with their soccer program? It's tough because the, the, the mm -hmm. way that the NCAA's schedule has been set forever is that soccer's in the fall, and that's it. And so you play two games a week for like 10 weeks. And that's it. And then you practice through the spring. And so it's good. And it's, I think it produces a lot of good players. And I'm biased. Um, I don't think it gets the credit that it deserves in the MLS. It creates a lot of good players. And a lot of national team players come from college. But I think that for college to become an even better route for these pro players, 
it's got to do the two semester model where you play the season throughout two, two semesters Whoa. because in the fall we weren't able to really practice besides game preparation hmm. because you have two games a week and so for half the year you're not really practicing and then the other half of the year you're not really playing games so there's got to be an in-between where you can play a game a week not to mention that then your marquee your championship would be in the spring COVID kind of forced it that way this past year. I was happy that my alma mater made it there. Unfortunately, they lost, talking about Indiana University. But, yeah, it was it was almost on a bigger stage then because it didn't have to compete with football as well. I agree. And it's um, – lacrosse does a really good job hmm. of doing it in the spring, and they make it like a lacrosse weekend, and they put it in a, a city that's, you know, very lacrosse-based, where everyone plays lacrosse. And if soccer can do the same thing in the spring – make it like a final four weekend, make it like a, you could include like a coaches conference or like a, uh, an academy development tournament that same weekend. You can make it a pretty good, pretty good event, especially in the spring. Did you ever walk through campus and look over outside of the library or the quad there and say, whoa, what's up, Roy Williams? I didn't ever see him. What? No, I mean, I would see him from a distance, but it was pretty cool. I'm a huge Tar Heel basketball fan. Have been for life. That's got to be kind of tough, though. I mean, Memphis is there. There was a I, what was his name? <laughs> this young freshman put uh, Memphis on the map, but uh, that's got to be strange for you. Grant, I know a lot of your folks, your family went to UNC, but you're there in Memphis. It's kind of a hotbed for basketball. Now you're out there on the West Coast, where you have UCLA, you've got Stanford, you've got Oregon up top in. Uh, you have numerous teams that are badass in basketball. You're gonna you're gonna fly those UNC colors. You're gonna be ballsy enough to do during uh, Pac-12 basketball season. Hundred percent. I Whoa. hope that they play at Stanford, <laughs> and I will wear my UNC gear to the game. No doubt. You'll be all by yourself, but you'll be loving it. That's all right. I bet See, we'll win too. Ooh. Listen, Skayhan, you're a young dude, and your Twitter account kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm Listen, not good on social media. Yeah, you're not good. You're not good at all. But that's what Whoa! you do, bro. You want to get some cool followers. You start rolling into Stanford, USC, Washington, you know, places like that. On San all Jose. his free time? <laughs> yeah, with, with UNC gear, bro. I mean, you, you talk about haters, but the lovers that you'll get, that's how you increase to get to get that blue mark and a few thousand more followers, bud. Maybe, that, maybe that's what I need to do. <laughs> I have to do something. I'm the, whatever I'm doing isn't right. Social media is hard these days, though, especially when you're an athlete. I mean, come on. How much free time do you really have to work on something that you're staring at on a phone or a computer screen? Yeah, and I just don't – yeah. I don't think I'd be good at it, so I haven't really tried. So you, maybe are, you, are you not good at talking smack? No, I'm just not good at, like – I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like, why? Why would anyone want to see this picture of me? <laughs> oh, okay. A lot of people say that you would be surprised, especially yeah. because you're an athlete. So yes, do something wacky, crazy. People love humor. People love something that you would maybe do that they would not be daring enough to do. They, for some reason, that sells too. That's true. Would you put on a dress? Let's put it that way. Not and that, kick no. the ball around. I'm just saying, if you okay. you and your players, you and the fellow your fellow Quakes, you guys had a bet going and you lost the bet, would you be okay to put on a dress and everybody all of your fellow players have to retweet it too? And then you get the followers. I, I don't think they'd let me back in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> not to hey, not that we object to dudes wearing dresses. I you know, no they problem. Could be, yeah. you know, I could be pretty comfortable in a dress, you know, just let it air dry for a while. If you're losing a bet, you gotta pay up. Right. That's true. I mean, if we get, I mean, you've got, dude, your name is awesome. I mean, Jack Scahan, the wild man, Jack, the man, Scahan. I mean, th listen, <laughs> I, I, you could pay me 500 bucks a, a month and I could, I, I could garner up a few more thousand followers for you, bud. <laughs> Maybe that's Gosh. what I have to do. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <sighs> hey, it's uh it's no secret that um, you got your start with San Jose in the, MLS is back tournament. What a what a weird way to start your professional career. Uh, but we, we saw what you did a, a couple of weeks ago with your first start uh, here in 2021. The game from 
college to when you were on the farm team in Reno to two games ago. Uh, give me a level of, of advancement and how you might be on the field going, holy crap, this shit is for reals. And that happened to me when I got to college. Hmm. I was like, you know, these guys are, everyone's so good. Everyone is fast and strong and good on the ball and smart. And then um, I stayed for four years. So I was able to develop. Once I got here, the same thing happened. I was like, everyone is so technical. Like, if you rip a ball into someone's foot, it's not going to bounce off their foot. They're going to trap it and it's going to be fine. And so, especially my first year, well, really, it's been about 18 months now. And the whole time, um, I've just been trying to get better and uh, develop my technique to where if someone hits a ball in my foot, I won't lose it. But really, it's the – so everyone's technical is what I'm getting at. Yeah. But really, it's the, the tactical part of the game where um, it's just everyone on both teams – knows the game so well and is so good and so fast and so strong that the little things make the, the biggest difference. So there's not going to be, unless you're playing, you know, messy or something, there's not going to be some guy who's just able to dribble six guys and score three goals because the defenders are so good. So it's like the tactical part of the game of where you position yourself on the field, uh, your body position when you get the ball, how quick can you get the ball off your foot to someone else mm -hmm. to create a goal scoring chance. That's the biggest difference is the, the, the tactics and how much you have to think. Who do you think you've learned the most from, whether it is a defender or somebody on your team or, or somebody on any team, actually? Who have you learned maybe the most from technique-wise? So when I was in school, I played on the wing. And when I got here, Matias wanted me to play in the middle. So I've been playing in the middle since I got here. And that was tough. That's a tough change, especially for me, because I, I didn't think I was a center mid. Um, and so playing with Jackson Ewell has been great because we're good friends and um, he's really good and his technique is super good. And I would watch him play and play against him and practice all the time and he just wouldn't lose the ball. And so that's where I was like, okay, that's when someone plays the ball into me in the middle, I just, I can't lose it. Like that's the key. And then once I get space, I can try to play like a winger. But when it's tight in the middle of the field, I've got to, learn from Jackson here and just not lose the ball. Did you campaign at all or do players campaign at all to make the U.S. men's team? Did you think you had a shot at the U.S. men's team? No, I, no, I haven't been playing. So, no. I, I would have never put myself in the, the category of thinking I deserve to be on that team. There's campaigning for everything. I, I know what you're saying. You're not putting out on Twitter, hey, U.S. Yeah, men's yeah. team, look at me. I'm Jack Scahan. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but isn't that, isn't that the goal? Maybe I'm missing something, but isn't that the goal? Is the, is the ultimate goal to play the U.S. men's team, make it to the World Cup? My goal is to play in the World Cup. Yep. 100%. Okay. That is what I want to do. And so I'm just, you know, working and trying to, trying to get myself on the field as much as possible. And then once I'm on the field, trying to make a difference. And that's, that's a tough thing to do, playing a World Cup. I mean, With your contract with San Jose, what's the first big thing you went out and bought? Nothing. <laughs> Damn, man. Come on. I'm in Xbox. And I regret buying it because I don't even – I don't play video games. I don't know why I bought it. I have no idea. I mean, I bought, like, furniture and stuff. Yeah, I had a car from high school, and it's old, but it's fine. I didn't go get a car. Uh, nothing yet. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds smart to me. So yeah. that's okay. <laughs> that's such a soccer player mentality. I can't argue yeah. with that. They're Wrong. just. It's. I'd rather have a kegger. <laughs> you know, than, <laughs> than go out and buy some fly freaking car. I'd just rather have a party with my boys, man. Yeah. Right. There's no doubt. <laughs> hey, man. We'll end it with this, Jack. Thanks for you've been a you've been a good sport with with us here in the Freak Nation. Uh, your ultimate goal is to play in the World Cup. I got that. But uh, you, the, the lineage of San Jose and the Quakes, it's not lost on us who followed s professional soccer here in the States for a long damn time. Have you thought about the kind of lineage that you could lay 
in San Jose or what San Jose's meant to Major League Soccer and how important it is to be wearing that Quakes Uni? I've definitely become more aware of what San Jose means to the MLS. Um, and having Wando as a teammate is, is pretty cool. Um, and even before that, the, the role that they had, um, you know, the success that they had early on and Landon Donovan and all those guys is, is pretty cool. And so I'm, I'm certainly grateful to play for the Quakes. It's pretty awesome. And living in California is not too bad. No, not at all. <laughs> Who's the one team that you just want to beat their ass so bad? Is it still L.A.? <laughs> I want to beat LA, but I want to beat Seattle. Just because of their history and dominance? Yeah, they're just, yeah, I, I guess so. I don't know. I just think that uh, I just want to beat them. I mean, their fan base can be pretty brutal. I uh, See, I haven't been to a uh, a full stadium there yet. Because last oh, year yes, when I did right, go, it was right. empty. Right. Gosh, that's so, whoa, it just still blows my mind. We're still not back to normal yet, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, which reminds me, I mean, again, you said you weren't good at talking smack. The Peruvians, when, I, when we played per- Peruvians on, the soccer, on, on college teams, those were the bastards. Those were the guys that would headbutt you when the refs weren't looking. Uh, they, I'm telling you, man. And by the time you wanted to pop them in the face, the ref was already looking at you. And then you it, get popped. Yeah. Uh, who, are the, who, who are the – so is there, was there a team out there – that uh, were just a bunch of SOBs, or I mean, did you ever get pissed off? You look like a pretty, pretty genteel guy to me, man. Well, that's the thing. I haven't played too much, so and I'm hoping to get there to where you know that competitive edge really comes out on the field, and that'll happen. But no, there hasn't been anyone yet that's made me mad. I don't think I've been a target. What about from your college days? Oh, yeah. oh from college, yeah. So our big rivals were Wake and Duke and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like those guys. I like the guys. I like some of the guys who played on the teams. I'm not saying I don't. I know some pretty well, but Wake especially. I didn't like Wake. <laughs> I don't know, man. UNC seems to be more of a, I don't want to say blue collar, but more of a worldly type accepted university. Duke is just a bunch of prima freaking Donnas. They can kiss my ass. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I was never going to Duke. At a boy. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't buy me that. I mean, Coach K and his hair? Come on, man. Duke basketball, too. I can't even get started. Uh, <laughs> suck. They don't suck. They're actually pretty damn good, aren't they? They're pretty good. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're pretty good. Uh, Jack, you've been a good sport, man. Thanks for doing this, buddy. Uh, maybe after this, uh, after this interview, you'll get six more followers on your Twitter account. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. Thanks. You got it. Have a good one.